Hi, Brent Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. We're going to talk about how to care for your flute today. There's a number of things that you can do that are going to help you get the most out of your flute over the long haul. The first thing that we're going to talk about is, uh, is getting the moisture out of your flute. That's the number one thing that you can do to uh, keep your flute in great condition over the long haul. There's a few things that are going to be really helpful for you in caring for your flute. The first thing is going to be a uh, microfiber cloth. If you can get a good high quality microfiber cloth, it's a really great thing to have for uh, taking care of your flutes. With my finish, uh, uh, you know, it's very durable finish and withstands scratches and things, but a microfiber cloth is just really nice against that finish and does a great job of polishing it without scratching it. The other thing it does is a microfiber cloth absorbs a lot of moisture. After about 20 minutes of playing the flute, when you turn your flute upside down, a lot of moisture is going to pour out of your flute. The reason that that happens is underneath the totem of my flute, back underneath the windway, there's a moisture reservoir. I'm pushing this swab into the moisture reservoir. So back up in here, there's a moisture reservoir. So this long windway is hollow underneath here, right back into about here. So that, that empty area is a moisture reservoir designed to capture moisture so that as you play your flute it will fill up with moisture that you uh, blow into the flute. And that moisture uh, is just condensation out of your breath. And after 20 minutes or so of play, when you turn the flute upside down, the moisture pours out of the flute. Um, if you play longer than that, the, the moisture will pour over the edge of the, of the uh, hole, the exit hole here, and clog up the windway, and you'll have a wet out situation. So you definitely want to empty the moisture out of the flute so that you don't have that situation happening. If you're wetting out earlier than that, it's probably because you're in a cold environment and your flute is condensating faster than normal. And so things that you can do to help for that are going to be to warm up your flute the best you can. You can take and put your flute under your armpit like this and that will warm that flute up and help it stay warm to keep it from wetting out. Now, um, when you're done playing, you get the moisture out by simply tapping it up and down like this or you can tap it up and down on your leg. You don't want to be swinging it like this. A lot of people will teach swinging it uh, but it's a real bad idea because if you swing it, you put the energy into your flute, you can lose control of it real easily. I've had a lot of people call me and say, gosh, Brent, I broke my flute because I, I was swinging it and I, I swung it into a, a countertop or I uh, had a dog come up behind me and grab it or I, you know, accidentally hit one of the kids or something like that. And so, you know, just all sorts of crazy things can happen when you're swinging the flute. And uh, so it's just a lot better if you just simply do this tapping method. It's really, really effective and uh, really gets a lot of the moisture out. If you try that, you'll really be surprised at just how effective it is. Keeps you under control of the flute and also keeps you from getting any kind of carpal tunnel or um, damage uh, to your tendons and tendonitis from swinging it. And um, so much, much more effective way of uh, getting the moisture out of your flute. Then, once you've gotten the moisture out, we're going to go ahead and just wipe the flute down. Like so, we wipe the flute down. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean the nest of the flute. The nest area is an important area to clean because if we don't get a good seal between the nest and the, and the totem of the flute, we have an air leak, and an air leak in the, in the uh, uh, totem and the flute is going to cause really bad sound in the flute. Um, if uh, When you're breathing into your flute, the breath has some solids dissolved in your breath. Um, you have calcium and some salts and things in your breath. There's also lignans that are in the, uh, in the wood of the totem that can come out of the totem from the water, and so that can get deposited back onto the surface of the uh, flute. And so what we'll do is we're going to fold the microfiber cloth and we're going to push that into the edge of the um, nest and we're going to just move that back and forth. Then we're going to fold that and just push that little fold into the 
corner again and move that back and forth in this other corner. Take the fold, push it into the windway, and move that back and forth in the windway, polishing the windway. Then I'm going to take a big fold, push that into the whole nest area, move that back and forth, and we've cleaned the nest area. Now the whole flute has been cleaned, and it's ready to just set and let it dry. That's the basic maintenance that I need to do on the flute on a regular basis. Um, you don't need to do anything more. But, on a weekly basis, or bi-weekly basis, you can do some additional maintenance that will also help keep your flute in real tip-top shape. On my website, you'll be able to purchase um, some swabs, these medical swabs. I bend them to uh, help clean the flute. So I'll show you. I'm just going to put a little bend here in the swab, and I'm going to insert it into the flute. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to turn it, and that's going to clean out the slow air chamber. And I'll pull that out. That's going to also absorb a lot of moisture, so I'll just take and press that moisture out into the microfiber cloth. Then I'll come into the, and I'll push it down into the moisture reservoir, and I get the moisture out again. Then I'm going to go backwards into the flute, cleaning it again. And use that swab. And I can reuse the swab many times. So those are available in packs of 10 on my website. You can get them in other places uh, on the web in bulk for a lot uh, better price than you can on my website, quite frankly. And so if you feel free to uh, look around, Google them if you can find them. And, uh, but if you want to just get them on my website in small quantities, by all means, feel free to do so. Um, the last thing that I want to show you is not available um, in bulk anywhere else, but is you can put in the flute in other ways and is really important. And so I highly recommend using eucalyptus oil one way or the other. And uh, what I do is I use a flute sense. Now flute sense was invented by a friend of mine. Uh, she sells uh, the oils. And uh, was, I was doing a festival and, and she wanted to come sell her oils there. And I said, gosh, Mary, would you mind coming up with a way of using eucalyptus oil in the first chamber of the flute without pouring the oil actually into the first chamber, because that's really hard on the flute, having the oil in the first chamber. And she says, yeah, let me work on that. And the company that she works with has diffusers, and they, so she got this material from them that's on the end of this. This is not a swab, it's a diffuser. So this material is made to diffuse and let go of the oil. And so you put just a couple of drops of the oil on the diffuser, and then you just insert the diffuser into the flute and you let the flute sit for you know a couple hours maybe two or three hours four hours something like that and let that oil just diffuse into the first chamber of the flute that slow air chamber now if your flute is perhaps another brand of flute maybe a butch hall flute or a flute that has a hole that's too small for the diffuser to fit into the mouthpiece you can uh, enter the uh, slow air chamber through the um, exit hole of the flute and that's also uh, an acceptable way to get the diffuser into the flute. And you just let that sit in the flute for a few hours and that will um, treat the flute with eucalyptus oil. What that does is that kills bacteria and it kills mold it, and it also keeps spiders from crawling into your flute and, uh, and cre you know, creating biological invasions in your flute. Um, I don't know how many people have really thought about that, but the, the flute is a great place for spiders and things like that to set up home. And gosh, that's something I just don't want in my flutes, <laughs> personally. And I have seen it um, several times. I've had people send in flutes and saying, you know, my flute's not playing right for me. Can you figure out what's wrong with it? And I look in there, oh my goodness. <laughs> 
and it's full of spider webs. And I clean out the spider webs, and the flute plays just fine. And so, um, so that's uh, that's definitely an issue that uh, is real and something that that we need to be concerned with is is what is crawling into our flutes. The eucalyptus oil keeps bugs and things like that, spiders, from wanting to be in our flutes. And so that's a great way to treat them. Now, if you don't want to spend the $20 that it takes to get the kit uh, from us, then um, you can go ahead and pick up a bottle of eucalyptus oil down at the drugstore or at, uh, at your local grocery store. And you can use the swab um, to put the oil in there. Um, like I say, don't put the oil in directly. That's just a bad idea. You could use a Q-tip or something like that. It's not going to work as well. Be careful not to put anything in there that um, is going to leave cotton in there or something like that. You don't want anything that's going to leave debris behind. And you don't want to put oil directly into that first chamber. But that will work great. Okay. Then, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and take care of the totem. Now, once we've gotten the totem off the flute, we've already dried the bottom of the totem. We want to go ahead and wipe the totem clean. We want to clean its little ears and clean behind the ears and just clean it all up nice and clean. This little rabbit totem is a real cute totem. I really like it. This is one of our new totems. I'm real, real tickled with it. It's got abalone heart line on it, and I think it is really beautiful. Anyways, the bottom of the totem is left bare wood on purpose. That's so it can absorb water and, and not wet out as fast, so that the flute doesn't wet out as fast. One of the things that will happen, though, is that the, wa the wood will absorb water and the fibers will stand up. When those fibers stand up, the wood will get rough. As the wood gets rough, the acoustics of the flute decrease in quality. So you want to be able to flatten the fibers down, uh, and you want to do that on a regular basis, because if you don't, then it gets harder to flatten the fibers down over time. And so, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a flat surface. The reason I have this table here is so that we can actually uh, uh, use it to flatten the fibers. And the best kind of material to flatten the fibers against is actually a cheap polyester tablecloth or a cheap polyester napkin. You can get a cheap napkin at uh, Walmart or at uh, Linens and Things. And we're going to go ahead and just push the t uh, totem directly into the table. And we'll move it around in a circular fashion as I'm pushing the totem into the table. And then I'll switch directions and the way that looks is like this. Five or six times in each direction while I'm pushing with my body weight into the table. And that's going to smooth the bottom of that totem out in a beautiful way. Now, if your totem actually has a groove in the totem, so the air channel is actually in the totem, not in the bottom of the flute, so it's not a wood sounds flute, maybe it's a high spirit flute or something like that, then what you want to do is get a popsicle stick and take your popsicle stick and push it down into the groove and push while you're pushing that popsicle stick in the groove um, move that popsicle stick around in a circular fashion in both directions and that will flatten those fibers down for you and uh, and it's going to really help the sound of the flute if if it's really really rough do it when the flute's wet and uh, that's going to help get those fibers flattened down what you're going to find is, if you've got a flute that's been not playing so great for you, is that's really going to bring a lot of life back to these old flutes for you, and it's, it's kind of cool. You know, when you can take a flute that maybe has not sounded really good for you after a while, and all of a sudden it sounds fabulous, that's kind of a neat thing. I, I really think that's a neat, a neat deal to bring, you know, new life back to an old flute is, is kind of a fun thing. So. Um, all right, so now that we've, we've treated the inside of the flute with eucalyptus oil on a weekly basis, we've dried the flute completely, we've allowed the flute to evaporate for 
Um, a couple of hours at a minimum in a drier area. If you live in a humid area, you want to let the flute dry out for uh, four to five hours without the totem on it. At that point, you can go ahead and, and put the totem back on the flute. And we'll tighten it back up. I like to cinch it up this way. And then I'm going to position it and back a little bit. This is too far back. And this is too far forward. Right there is the Goldilocks position. And I'll try and show you close-up pictures of each one of those positions. And so you can see what too far back, too far forward, and the Goldilocks position looks like. What's just right as far as totem position. All right, well let's talk about one more thing. Uh, flutes that don't have the wood sounds finish on the flute body, like the wood sound student flute. This is a beautiful flute, a more simple instrument, but uh, very beautiful in and of itself. Very uh, simple in its design and yet very elegant. It has finish on the mouthpiece and uh, finish on the inside of the uh, first chamber, but no finish anywhere else on the instrument. On this flute, what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, Greybeard's Wax. Now, Greybeard's Wax can also be used on our regular flutes to, uh, to bring shine back to a flute that perhaps has gotten some scratches on it. Um, and it works very well for that. And I will have Greybeard's Wax very shortly. I'll have this available on my website as, a, uh, as something that you can purchase on my website. But to use Greybeard's Wax, you simply take a bit of the wax and you put it onto a, a microfiber cloth And you rub that into the uh, into the flute, and you work that into the entire flute, and then you let it sit for an hour or two, and then you'll come back and you polish it off, and that leaves a nice, beautiful finish on the flute. You know, it looks really, really beautiful and nice, and provides a protective layer onto the instrument. You can use a cloth to put on the Greybeard's wax, but I personally like to put it on by hand. When I put it on by hand, the, my, the temperature of my hand helps put the, melt the wax into the, uh, the wood, and uh, I like the way that it feels, and I like the feel of the wood in my hands, and uh, all of that is just a good connection of the instrument um, to, uh, to me, the player. Um, you can also use the, the wax on, uh, of course, our rustic flute with our woodpecker totem on it. And, of course, the Taos Old Style Flute, the original of the rustics, or the original of the old-fashioned type flutes. So, again, I'm Brent Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. I hope that this video has been some help to you in caring for your instruments. You can reach me at 801-822-1415 or brent at woodsounds.com. Have a great day.